going on? Welcome to another edition of Gen Specs Corner back for you for April 22nd, 2023. You know what we're talking about tonight? Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia going on tonight. Pay per view. You can catch it on the zone pay per view as well as Showtime and I believe PPC. Um, yo, big fight, big fight. I'm waiting for this for a minute. This is one of the biggest fights to be made right now. Two guys in their prime at their peak. This fight's going to make both of these guys' career one way or another. So right now we have the the fight uh, going on. Uh, Javante Tank Davis, a betting favorite uh, at minus 230 with Vegas, meaning you'd have to bet 230 to win $100. And Garcia is a slight underdog at uh, plus 190. So, you know, look, he's the clear favorite, Tank Davis, but it's not as lopsided as people would surmise. Vegas certainly doesn't think so. I don't think so as well. And I'm going to give you guys my opinion, my breakdown, my thoughts on who's going to win the fight and where the strengths and weaknesses lie for both fighters. Before I get into it, YouTubers, like, subscribe, share the video, click the notification bell, you know the rest, so you don't miss a video when I drop it. And let's go ahead and get into this fight, man, as always. Boxing is is one of my, that's, that's my baby right there, and I love talking about it. So let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So you have... Tank Davis, one of the biggest draws money-wise in in the bo boxing sport right now. And then you have Ryan Garcia, who's very, very famous on social media, obviously has the skills to pay the bills. He wouldn't be here if he wasn't a skilled fighter. However, his legacy has yet to be cemented, and this is the fight for him. He's been looking for a big fight, and in particular, he's been looking to fight Tank. They've been drawing at it for years. I think between Devin Haney and Tank Davis, those are the two guys that I've seen Ryan Garcia going back and forth with the past three, four, five years. And now he's in a position to fight one of them and really stake his claim to getting a shot at fighting Devin Haney after this, right? I, obviously, Tank Davis, if I was him, I would want to be in line to fight Devin Haney as well after the Lomachenko fight with Haney. You know, they're both setting themselves in a position to get their shot at all four belts. It's, that's big time stuff. If you do that, it's those are the final bosses. You, you can get that done. That's it. So let's go ahead and look at this fight and break it down. So th this this fight, you have two guys, two very high level boxers. And we, we look at at um Tank Davis, 5'5", 67 and a half inch reach, fighting Southpaw. 28 years old, coming out of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Baltimore, however you want to pronounce it, and he, he's undefeated. I mean, 28-0 with, I believe, 26 knockouts. He has a 92% knockout rate. Power in both hands. Might as well just be Thanos in terms of power and whatnot, especially at his size. And he's uh, champion at 135, I believe. And that was the, the catch weight for this fight. They had the weigh-in at 135, and there was a rehydration gloss, which I'll get into after this where they couldn't be more than way more than 10 pounds the day after the weigh-in. So they weighed in on Friday yesterday. They both came in under the 135 pound mark. And then today, Ryan Garcia weighed in at 144.9 pounds or something like that. So he, he uh, met the stipulations for the, the weigh-in on Saturday. And now after they, they weighed in now, now they can rehydrate to whatever weight they want. But that's going to come into play in terms of my my total my final pick here, and then you have Ryan Garcia, five ten. He has about five inch height advantage on Javante, seventy inch reach, about two two and a half three inches of reach advantage there. He fights orthodox, so the exact opposite of the South Paul Tank Davis, and he's only twenty three four years old, twenty three and zero, with uh. So you have like, let's see. So you have like um, 19 knockouts. Yeah. So he he has um he's knocking out people at an 82 percent clip. So he also has power. We, we know what Ryan brings, man. He got he got power, especially that left hook. That's what he does. He catches with that left hook. You sleeping, and then you know what I mean that that's it. So he has power as well. So you have the taller fighter, lankier fighter with really really good speed. And a really, really mean left hook against a guy in Javante Tank Davis 
with power in both hands and a sneaky straight right that he's going to catch orthodox fighters with 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 um consistency and he does All right so that's the breakdown and let's go ahead and look at the last six fights that each one of these gentlemen have had and you're going to see the resumes and see slight differences here between the two so let's start out with ryan garcia in his last six fights he fought jose lopez back in 2019 romero duno later in 2019 win by ko francisco fonseca in the beginning of 2020 right before lockdown got the the, the stoppage there at ko Luke Campbell, that was one of the highlight fights of his career. Luke Campbell, not a great fighter, but solid fighter. The type of fighter that doesn't win titles, but even when he fights the, the really top guys and loses, he's always a tough opponent. And Luke Campbell was about 5'9", and had a one-inch reach advantage on him, and he was able to clip Ryan Garcia. He fainted to the body. He's fighting orthodox, right? He fainted to the body. Um, with the right hand, and then boom, came up with the left hook, dropped him. First time Ryan Garcia had been dropped in his career, and it was really a, a make-or-break moment. Uh, you know, it was a test, and he was able to get up, and not only did he get up off the canvas, but he finished the round pretty strong, and then he came back and then walked Luke Campbell down for the rest of the fight and then stopped the Luke Campbell. So that was a very, very good showing for Ryan Garcia, and for him as a fighter to know that I can get hit. I know this guy doesn't have the, the power that a Tank Davis has. However, I can get hit and I can get up and I can come forward and walk a guy down and do what I want to do. That was very important for him, I believe. And then the second uh, most recent fight, Emmanuel to go to go pretty short, stocky fighter. And that that was a mismatch. Um, but it, it, that was a, a good stay busy fight coming coming out of lockdown. And then his last fight in 7-16-2022 last year, he had the stoppage of Javier Fortuna. Uh, it might have been the, the fourth or fifth round or something like that. And he had three knockdowns of Fortuna, and then Fortuna was stopped after the third knockdown. And that fight was, I think, very key for Ryan Garcia. And I think they chose him for a reason. It wasn't by mistake. Right, Javier Fortuna, Southpaw fighter, very, 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 very good fighter. Couldn't beat the top guys, again, like a Luke Campbell, but very, very good fighter. And even in his losses, he was very competitive. He had a uh, unanimous decision loss against Jojo Diaz. Who, Jojo Diaz is a very, very good fighter. He had 12-round uh, unanimous decision loss. And then one of his other losses was to Robert Easter Jr. Split decision, 12 rounds. And... Robert Easter Jr., very lanky fighter, very, very good fighter, who was 20 and 0 at the time. So he's been in there with some really good competition. So to be able to not only beat Javier Fortuna, but stop him, that says a lot. And if you look at the metrics, Javier Fortuna, five, six and a half, similar to Davis. Reach, 68 and a half inches. Similar to Tank Davis. All right? His power. He's only knocking out people at a 60% clip. However, he has solid power, and he's a very crafty fighter. And he was able to slowly and systematically break down Javier Fortuna. Fortuna had his moments here and there, but like Brian Garcia went in there with a purpose and was able to land his jab at will and really control the pace of the fight, the distance, and then slowly wear him down, landing a, a left hook to the body. So, you know, Tank Davis, he knows that's going to be coming. He got to be ready for that. And then he was able to set a lot of things up off of that left hook. All right, so that's what his resume looked like in the last six fights. Solid, nothing crazy to write home about, but especially the last fight, a very, very, very solid win over an opponent that I think they chose in order to prepare him for Tank Davis. Because I think they, they knew that the, the fight was in the works and they wanted to prepare. Now you look over at Tank's resume. Tank's been hella active. And you look at the guys on his resume, Gamboa, back in 2019, a faded Gamboa, and he stopped Gamboa. I remember watching that fight. However, you start you saw some holes in, in the game there. All right. You saw some holes some holes in his game. And he was getting hit by a faded Gamboa who didn't have the reflexes or the quickness that he had before, but he had just enough to give him problems. And then the fight after that, Leo Santa Cruz in 2020 on Halloween had to knock out on the uppercut against Santa Cruz. But 
Santa Cruz landing a lot of punches. Now, some would say he's fighting that way and allowing him to land punches because he doesn't respect his power. He's not really worried about it that much. But I I think part of it is that. But part of it is he has lapses in defense from time to time. And then you look at the Mario Barrios fight. He went up to 140. But Mario Barrios, um, I believe he was weight drained in that fight. And um, he stopped. He, he beat him by stoppage. Solid win, but, you know... Considering the circumstances, it's, it's hard for me to really draw a whole lot from that. And then the next fight, which was a really good for him fight for him, was Isak Cruz, Pitbull Cruz, in December fifth of twenty twenty one. You met unanimous decision, but a very tough fight. He brought his lunch pail to work because he needed it. As Isak Cruz, he he made a name for himself in that fight against Tank Davis, and Tank had a lot of issues with the shorter fighter who is very awkward and, and unorthodox. Not necessarily in his stance, but just in his fighting style. Then you had Rolly Romero after that. He had the TKO stoppage against Rolly Romero in like the sixth round or whatever. Caught him with the... I don't remember what he caught him with. It might, might have been a straight right when he was coming in and um, sent him into the ropes. Boom. Got him out of there. But Rolly Romero, he, he, he a green fighter. He has a lot of things that he needs to work on. Defensively irresponsible. Jumps in a lot. He has solid power, but... He, the jab is okay, but he, 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 a very athletic but extremely raw fighter. You're talking about a guy with a martial arts background that transferred over into boxing late, and you can still see some of the things that are still things that you would do in a karate tournament, but not necessarily in the boxing ring. So, I mean, again, solid win, but like nothing to really write home, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the last fight he had, and I think this is a really good win for him and a very good tune-up fight, and I wouldn't even call it a tune-up fight because Hector Luis Garcia, the other Garcia, not no pushover. He won the belt at 130 against... <sighs> the, this guy, this other guy that he beat for the belt at 130, he had a fight like last month, and um, I think... The guy that he beat got robbed, but yeah, he he beat this guy who's on the on the on the come up, and took that belt and he beat him decisively, and then you know he slick boxer, defensively something to be was desired, but he he real slick and he got in there and it was a really good back and forth fight. He was landing his shots, Tank was landing his shots, and they were going back and forth, and then Tank won it by sheer power. Landed a nice punch on the top of the dome and threw his equilibrium off and then got him up out of there. That was a very impressive win, and it got him, it kept him sharp coming into this fight. All right, so that's the last six for Tank, and I like that Tank stayed active, whereas Ryan Garcia, he chose to forego his fight that was scheduled for this past January, which I think it was a mistake. I think that Oscar, if I can recall, said it was a mistake not to stay get the warm up and, and, and um stay sharp. You know what I mean? But you no, know, here we are now. So let's go ahead and, and break down the different attributes here for each fighter and see who's gonna come out on top. So you you have Ryan Garcia and, and Tank Davis. Both have established amateur careers. Ryan Garcia definitely a very um well established amateur, a fifteen time national Gold Glove champion, something to that extent. He's, he's very, very sharp. But you don't get to that point just by being okay and having extreme deficiencies in your game. No. You have to – you see a lot of different styles and you see high caliber uh, competition once you get to that point. When you're, when you're winning fight after fight after fight in the amateurs and you start stepping up in competition you, and you're still winning after you – you up the competition level, you don't do that by mistake. So for the, for those that think that Ryan Garcia is just the left hook and that's nothing else, there was another fighter named Oscar De La Hoya who had a left hook from hell. Right hand, okay, not, nothing crazy, but it'll, it'll get your attention. But a really, really good jab and a left hook, top five left, left hooks of all time. I, I throw Oscar's left hook up there in the conversation with Joe Frazier's. You know, it was, it was that good. And you see Ryan Garcia following in the same footsteps of Oscar De La Hoya. So you look at 
some of the different attributes here. So the first one I'm going to go to is speed. Now you have both guys very quick, you know, really good hand speed for both of these guys. Um, I, I would say that I would give the slight advantage to Ryan Garcia. He has just a, a little extra oomph, little extra snap in, in his punches. He, he throws it, Tank throws fast, but Ryan throws like fast, fast, fast. So I, I give the slight edge to Ryan Garcia in the speed department. Next thing on the list would be power. Both guys got power. Like I said, Ryan Garcia, 80, 80 to 82% uh, knockout ratio. But Tank Davis, 92% KO ratio. So I would say Tank Davis, I give him, ironic, I'm giving him a slight edge here. Because I think it's pretty obvious that he has power in both hands, dynamite in both hands. But people don't realize how much power Ryan Garcia has in his left hand. So, you know, it's going to be, in my opinion, a story of who lands first. The person to land first with a significant shot will probably set the tone for the fight and win the fight. Tank could land first and, and get his attention and set the tone and win. But if Ryan lands the first significant punch, I could see it being a long walk down to uh, the ground level for for Tank Davis. So I get the slight edge to uh, Tank Davis here for power, but it's a pretty pretty good matchup in that department. Next would be footwork. So this is where the first attribute where I give a clear edge to Tank Davis. Ryan Garcia, he's an athletic guy, but he has a tendency of fighting flat-footed. If you watch any of his fights, especially the Luke Campbell fight, You'll see him fighting flat-footed. He'll stand there. He'll move, shuffle from here, here and there. But for the most part, he's sitting there and loading up on his punches, sitting on that back foot and loading up on his punches. Whereas uh, Tank Davis, he stays um, nice and he's um, well balanced. Keeps his his weight evenly distributed between his left and his right foot, and he's always able to jump forward and jump back out of range at will. Good lateral movement, not crazy lateral movement, but pretty pretty solid lateral movement. I don't see that much lateral movement out of Ryan Garcia. So here I would give footwork to Tank Davis. And that's going to be something he's going to have to use, obviously, as a shorter fighter to be able to close range and slowly, slowly put the clamps on Ryan Garcia. So that's key number one in the fight that comes off of the footwork. Next one is defense. This one is a push for me. It's a toss-up. I think the obvious answer would be, oh, Ryan Garcia, you know, he, his defense is okay, but it's shoddy. You know, his right hand comes down. You can catch him like he did with Luke Campbell, da-da-da-da. And that's true. He got stuff to tighten up on his defense. But so does Tank Davis. He hasn't – his defense is solid, but it's not anything special, man. He comes out in the high guard. You know what I mean? He He's looking for you to beat yourself, more or less. He's not going to do anything out of ordinary. No shoulder rolling. Not a whole lot of, like, head movement like you see with Canelo or Floyd Mayweather or side-to-side -side movement like with Lomachenko or Manny Pacquiao. He's going to be, you know, nice, nice, easy. Move, throw a counter shot back. Slowly try to close distance, set you up with feints, but like he's not really doing, it's, it's not like a, a lot of special effects with the defense. And he gets caught with a lot of shots that he shouldn't. He did against Leo Santa Cruz. Um, part of that is because I think he's like, oh, this guy can't hurt me. But part of it is he's just getting caught with some shots he just didn't see. Same thing with Isak Cruz. You go down a list of the opponents he's faced. He's Yuriakis Gamboa, a faded Gamboa. He was getting hit by a shot by Gamboa. So he got to clean that up. You know what I mean? So that's a push for defense. Next on the list is ring IQ. This is where I think um, another another point is going to go to Tank Davis because I think that he has more experience with higher caliber opponents. So I, I think ring IQ wise, he's he has a tendency for falling behind in his fights early on and then just waiting it out, taking you to deep waters, being patient, not getting clipped by anything good, 
and then waiting, trying to either wait for you to make a mistake or luring you into mistakes that are going to cost you in the long run. So you might set something up in the second round, feign it, feign it. And then if you don't make the right adjustments, he'll come right back to that that trick in round six or seven and try to make you pay for it, landing a big shot. All of a sudden, instead of fainting and stopping, he's fainting and then coming with something else, right? So you have to watch out for for the uh, the traps that he's going to be setting. Uh, so ring IQ, I would give to Javante Tank Davis. Experience. Also, again, I give to Javante Tank Davis because he's been in fights with slightly better competition and he's he's uh they both face adversity but he's seen a few more styles at this level than ryan garcia has um but it's not like by a wide margin because like i said the amateur experience is in my opinion going to show for ryan garcia obviously tank was a very good amateur but ryan garcia it the experience that he lacks at the pro level he's going the amateur experience is going to show up as it has shown up in some of his fights leading up to this, including the Luke Campbell fight and the Javier Fortuna fight. So as to Tank Davis, but not by a huge, huge margin like many would think. And then last but not least would be X Factor. Who has the that it factor to turn the tide at the blink of a moment or completely turn the, the tide in his favor at any point in the fight. And I, I'm actually going to give this to Ryan Garcia. And I'm going to tell you why. So Tank Davis, I think the easy answer would be for Tank Davis because it's like no matter where you're at in the fight, it could be round two or round eight. Even if he's losing, it's almost like Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders could have 14 yards in the third quarter and then out of nowhere, boom, 80-yard run, right? That's the type of mindset and that you that you're gonna get with a Tank Davis. You never know when he could explode with a really good straight right or a left hook or whatever he's throwing at you to, to really rock your bell. Right? However, and Ryan Garcia has not seen a guy with that type of power who's this versatile. However, Tank Davis has not seen a guy like Ryan Garcia. Um, and he's not been hit by a guy like Ryan Garcia with his power because he gets hit a lot. And that's always been my pet peeve for Tank Davis is, dude, you get hit too much. And eventually it's going to, to catch up with you. And Ryan Garcia, I don't think Tank Davis is dumb enough to think that the left hook is all, all that Ryan Garcia has. But I think there is some truth to that where Tank and his team may think that, okay, Ryan can do some other things, but not to the point where it's anything we'll be concerned about. Or um, I, I, that that left hook is, there, there are people that fight, right? You have like martial artists, right? And they're just like, you know, you get into the ring, like, oh, well, he's going to throw a, a, side, a, a roundhouse kick. Right, that's all I have to watch out for. All right, and some people are like that. But there, there are definitely those guys where it's like, the left roundhouse kick might be the bread and butter, but you never see it coming straight on. It's never one plus one equals two. It's usually like a quadratic equation or division or multiplication. It's never as straightforward as what you think it's going to be or what people that fought that guy will tell you it is or what some of the fans may try to make it out to be. It's not going to be that simple as just looking for the left hook and you're good or just, you know, He's fainting off the jab, um, especially in the Fortuna fight. He's coming with that right hand consistently, incessantly. He's throwing that jab incessantly, quickly, not getting into habits. Jab, step back, jab. Like, you know, very, it's hard to get the timing on it. So I'm going to give the X factor to Ryan Garcia, even though both guys are very dynamic fighters. And then with that being said, all in all, I, I think... In this fight, I give the slight edge to Ryan Garcia. I think that Ryan Garcia is going to win this fight by decision. Um, I, I know I've been saying for a while, I think this fight is going to end by knockout. Um, if, if Tank wins, it's going to be by knockout. But if Ryan wins, um, 
he could knock out Tank, yes, but I think that going to deep borders, I don't think it's going to be as easy of a task of drowning Ryan as as Tank may think it, it may be. Uh, I think Ryan Garcia, I think that jab and ironically the straight right is going to be a, a, a big problem for Tank Davis tonight. I think that um, Ryan is going to eat some shots though. And we're going to see, going into the fight, I had Ryan Garcia as my pick. The main reason why I think that it's going to be a very close decision for him is because of the weight cut. And I told you guys I was going to come back to the rehydration clause. Losing, Cutting that weight to get under 135 and not being able, able to rehydrate more than 10 pounds the next day especially for a guy that's taller with his frame fighting down at 135, that can definitely affect him more than it affects Tank, who's a, a smaller guy. Now, he fights heavier, I get that, but um, I, I, I think that it, it could possibly put more of a strain on Ryan than it does on, on Tank. But to his credit, he, he took the fight with those stipulations. You know, some people would have said, forget that, I ain't taking that fight. You know, all the, you want A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I got to cut down to a catch weight, man, forget it. But he took it. So, you know, you can't complain about it at this point. But, you know, you have to be aware of these factors going into the fight. Um, that being said, I think that Ryan Garcia, the uh, the explosiveness with the jab and then a sneaky right hand is going to be the difference for him. Obviously, the left hook is there, but I think that the right hand, and that's something we saw him throw a lot against Javier Fortuna, and I think he's probably going to re-up on that game plan or, or um, add wrinkles to that going into this fight. And uh, Goosen, in, in his corner, he really got him him prepared. And vice versa, I mean, Tank is prepared too. Both of these guys are ready. I think it's going to be a great fight. I just think that Brian Garcia, I give him a slight edge in this fight. But I think it's going to be uh, fireworks. So that's my prediction. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you got – uh, Ryan Garcia, if you got Tank Davis, uh, who's going to win? What's going to be the decision? Is it going to be decision, knockout, what round you guys think? You, you know the deal. Um, but, yeah, that, that's it for this one. Um, oh, little side note, Sixers got the sweep over the Nets, man. Give them the F out of here. Um, ben Simmons, he got a long offseason to think about what the hell he wants to do moving forward with his career. But, you know, that's another, another story for another time. Um, yeah. But it's 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time. It's 4 o'clock here Pacific time for me. So I'm going to let y'all go ahead and um, get to watching the rest of the NBA games and then the fight later tonight. So um, till next time, appreciate y'all tuning in, and then I'll holler at y'all in the next episode. Deuces.